Today, I've got a B-roll battle with the iPhone 11 Pro and the Panasonic Lumix GH5. If you're new to this channel, my name is Caleb and I've been doing freelance video production since 2012. And this channel is to help you make your own videos, whether you just started or you've been making them for a while. If that's something you're interested in, it'd be awesome if you hit that subscribe button. Okay, here's what I'm doing with this video. I'm not running technical tests or getting into specs on the cameras or anything like that. I was hanging with my buddy Liam and I just filmed some B-roll sequences with him. I tried to film the same sequence as close to the same as possible with each camera. I'm using the stock camera app on the iPhone 11 Pro in the one time zoom, which is close to a 26 millimeter. On the GH5, I'm using the natural color profile in the Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter 2.8. And I tried to keep it around 12 millimeter, which should be near the 26 millimeter equivalent of what the iPhone 11 Pro was. For the rest of the video, I'll just put up some text about what you're seeing on the screen. Nothing fancy. I'm not saying get one camera over the other or that the iPhone 11 Pro should be your new cinematic standard. I just wanted to see how they compared and how they held up on YouTube. So here they are. All right, so let's talk about what I saw when I put it into Adobe Premiere Pro. And one of the first things I noticed is that the image quality on both of these cameras is amazing. Now I've been using the GH5 for a long time, so I already knew that was amazing, but the image quality coming out of the iPhone 11 Pro is top notch. One of the things is that the image is a little bit sharp. So kind of like with GoPros or with um, DJI's, some of those smaller sensor cameras, the image is gonna be a little bit sharper. So you might need to bring the sharpness down in post to give it kind of more of like mirrorless feel to it. Another thing with the iPhone 11 Pro is that the colors are a lot more saturated 
that's to be expected. Now there's some third party apps like Filmic Pro that you can use to shoot in different color profiles, like a log profile. On one of the clips, I did a simple color grade, which I think worked a little bit. I brought the sharpness down and just applied some different coloring to it. And I thought it turned out all right, but the saturation of the colors could be an issue or maybe not. Now we all know that the autofocus on the Panasonic GH5 is not fantastic, but one of the great things about the iPhone 11 Pro is the face detection and it locks on every single time, so you always know that you're gonna be in focus. The stabilization on both of these cameras is outstanding. We've all seen stuff about the IBIS on the Panasonic GH5, but what the iPhone 11 Pro was able to produce, I thought was incredible. So everything that I shot was handheld and it didn't look like I was on a tripod or anything, but the image quality I thought was very stable. Now, I didn't even talk about the different focal lengths on the iPhone 11 Pro. That might be another video, but it's nice having the option to go ultra wide or have that zoom in option, but it's nice having those different focal lengths, especially if it's your main camera that you're using. I thought the upscaled HD held up pretty well for both cameras. Now the upscaled image for the GH5, I thought was a lot better, but the upscaled HD image coming from the iPhone 11 Pro, I thought held up really well. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. What device were you watching on? Were you watching on a phone or were you watching on a computer? Could you notice any difference between the two shots? Could the iPhone 11 Pro be a full-time YouTube content machine? Well, it was fun putting this video together. Thank you to Liam for being in the video and thank you for watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video.